for joining us in this Retail Revival chat. Um, today we're going to be talking about kind of the past year for a hobby and how you've looked to kind of revolutionize the approach to marketing that the brand had and looking at kind of dialing back some of the newsletter messages that you were sending and focusing really heavily on automation to really drive value to your customers. Um, just to introduce myself really quickly, I am Vic or Victoire for the French speakers out there. Um, I am a client success manager at Marsis and work day to day with the lovely Mariana Poppy. Yes. And hello to all you guys. I'm Marianne and I have a, I'm a head of CRM in Hoopy and have been it for almost a year now. Uh, Hoopy is uh, the fastest growing company in Denmark. Uh, when you're talking about e-commerce, we won a prize this year for being the fastest growing. So we are quite a huge firm right now in e-commerce and scale up. We are only a um, five-year-old company selling yarn to crociers and knitters all around the world. Perfect. So I think, Marianne, you and I started working together about a year ago, right, when you joined the hobby team. And at the time, the business kind of had a really low reliance on automation and the approach to, to kind of marketing was really, really heavily focused on newsletter. Um, could you kind of give us a little bit of background in terms of the business and the two, I guess I will know this, but the two customer streams that you have. So the design newsletter versus your normal newsletter and how you typically approach those two different types of customers as well. Yeah. When I started uh, last summer, we had this, uh, this main newsletter, which is basically a kind of a discount newsletter where we are heavily focusing on sales. And we're like, uh, as we say in OP, we have Black Friday every, every day, every week. So when a sale is stopping, a new one is beginning um, the day after. So we always have yarn on sale. So that's the, that email is being sent out three times a week to our customers. Uh, the customers has given us a permission for that newsletter for itself. And then we have uh, the design newsletters and they are of course, full up with designs of patterns for crochet or knitting and inspiration for what can our customers do with the yarn. So it's uh, it's more, uh, it, it's not so huge on sales. When the sale is starting and ending, we have a little bit, but the focus is 80% uh, on patterns and 20% on sales. And also here, the customers are signed up for this in particular. They yeah. want to see this or the other one. But actually 70% of our leads or customers have signed up for both newsletters. So if you're signed up for both, you'll receive a huge amount of newsletters because it's five, newsletters a week who is not personalized it's one size fits all yeah and I think one of the use cases that we have kind of been talking about more recently is taking people from the design newsletter and from just downloading pat patterns for specific you know tops or baby dinosaurs that they want to knit and things like that and saying okay how can we make a journey that makes them see the value that hobby can bring to them and then converts them into customers. And I think, especially now with all of the changes that are coming to privacy with things like the iOS changes yeah. or, or cookie list tracking and things like mm -hmm. that, getting that first party data and figuring out exactly what your customers are interested in and giving them something in exchange for the opt-in or for the data that they give you um, is so, so important. Um, and I know it's something that you've been working on a lot. So can you tell us a little bit more about, I guess, that entire flow and how you're looking yeah. to get people in from the design newsletter and then turn them into big fans of hobby? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, we're looking into also to when they download a pattern today, they can just download it and then there's, it is in their mail. But we can see that we have so many informations from the downloads that we could use it for both making better flows to our customers and not just giving them the pattern right away. 
but also to actually make a kind of a digital profiling on the customers. So there's two ways we can use it. We take the flow uh, from, at first we have, when we have a, a pattern, we know we put it into categories. Is it knit or is it crochet or is it a, what type is it? Is it a shirt or is it a, a, some, a toy for the kids or everything? What is it? And also which yarn is used for this? Is it in the category of cotton or is it wool? And all these stuffs are linked to the patterns. So we can use that for, for the flow to say, maybe we would like to do this or this pattern also, but we can also use it if we can see the customers haven't bought the yarn to the pattern, just to say, yeah, maybe you forgot to buy at first, it's these things. Who, who have been uh, used in this pattern that we have made, you can see on the pictures, but we'll also use it for, maybe you didn't like this yarn, maybe you like these yarn alternatives because they can also be used. And of course, when they have downloaded a pattern, we wanna help our customers as much as possible. And we make a, a, a lot of uh, YouTube videos where we show the techniques and uh, in the flow, we would like to also say, hey, have you gotten started with your, with your pattern? Do you know that we have made these videos? They can be helpful to you. And then the last, then say, are you finished with your pattern? Please share it with all the other fantastic knitters or crochet out in the world because they want to see it. And it's all this about the community thought. Yeah, so, and we are, we are we're quite a big fan of the community thought. Yeah, and I think it's also when we go back to community, right, you guys started this customer club in the past year and it's had these insane results. I remember you saying that in like under 12 months, you've got more than one million members. Yeah. In it. And I think that really talks to how it's this idea of a value exchange, right? You're not just trying to sell more products. You're trying to make sure that your customers have a good experience once they've purchased or downloaded. Um, and that they become really, really sticky and loyal to you as well. Yeah, we are almost reaching. We we launched the customer club, my hobby, at the, I believe first of September, and we are almost reaching one point one million. Uh, this is a huge change from us, is because when you have a, a my hobby, then you have a login. Yeah, and then you know the customers not because they have are buying something, but we can know our customers when they log in and most of the clients are logged in from the beginning. And in my hobby, there's also this wishlist function. Uh, and this wishlist function, we can use in price props also. If yeah. it's a product they have wished on, then it's not just what they have looked on on the site, but also, hey, your wish has come through. Yeah. <laughs> Something yeah. on the wishlist has been uh, dropped in price. Uh, but I can also use it in the um, two of the flows we have activated since last summer, and it's the win back flow and in the lead engagement, because in those two flows, we are giving the customers a 10% discount code. And today it's like, yes, we have the recommendation bar in the email because what have they last looked at? But it's also a, a key driver, I believe, that we can put in, maybe you should use this 10% or something on your wish list. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use that in, in many ways. So the, the My Who Be has been um, a good driver for, for the CRM, I believe. Yeah. And I think it, it's what you said about kind of getting the balance right between getting people to explicitly tell you, I'm a knitter or I'm a crocheter yeah. or I build, I, you know, knit things for my grandchildren or I knit yeah. things for myself. And it's yeah, and using that information that they give you, but also using things that, you know, you figure out what they have an affinity towards from their browsing behavior or from what they download, et cetera, and really working to build a, a really tailored one-to-one -one experience for all your customers as well. Yes, because I believe it's easy to, not easy, but it's, it's easy to send out a questionnaire asking, what are your preferences? And a whole lot of firms have done that, but the reality is that, yes, you get the customer's preference for the moment. Yeah. And, but you don't know, you cannot see they are changing. And we're not, we not like steady. 
I'm here, this is my preferences. So I can follow up when I'm doing the, the profiling from the downloads of the patterns, I can follow, are they suddenly gonna be a crochet instead of a knitter or are they, are they doing both? Or have they shifted out to making baby patterns instead of uh, granny patterns or something like that? So, uh, so I think that it's not a kind of a manually profiling, it's actually using data to doing the, the, the running profiling on our customers so they can go in and out of our segments. And then yeah. we can use these segments in our design newsletter. That is actually the journey we are on. So is that to use this making segments and then use that to, to make more one-to-one um, -one communication in the design newsletter. So it's, it's not one size fits all. Yeah. And I think this is, if we look back at kind of the past year and not the battle that you've had internally, but looking at saying, okay, our email campaigns as we send them right now, when they go to everyone and they're really promotionally led, they make us a lot of money, but maybe it makes sense to scale things back a little bit more and have higher quality in the content and make it a lot more personalized. When you look back at kind of the past year in your role and coming into hobby and, and kind of the results that you've generated, what, what does that look like in terms of how you've been able to shift that strategy? Yeah. That is that has been a bit <laughs> difficult because um, when uh, a huge amount is uh, coming out of the emails and we talk revenue here, and uh, when it all comes to business, it's about making money. So, so for me, it has been this uh, going into the business, uh, doing everything as we're used to, uh, getting some flows running and see the flows. And today I can tell that I just looked it up right now. And today the flows I have activated from, I started last summer to now, they are now um, gaining 20% of the revenue from the emails. So that's that's a starting point, I believe, is yeah. to show that automation can do actually quite a bit for you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in a position now where I can say, I believe it's time for us to to not send two designed new letters but to send one design newsletter but making it better so using a little more time and effort in making it because it would be bigger it would be a quite a bigger task because else there's not content enough in the email for the readers so 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 because of the revenue i gain from the flows i can convince my bosses that this is a good idea to do this yeah. And um, and uh, also because we're quite a new firm, five years, then then uh, we have been very, very good at gaining new permissions. Uh, so we haven't looked really into the, the loyalty about keeping the customers or the third and fourth and fifth purchase and everything like that. And I believe that's also a thing I can that is, is possible to, to sell them. Yeah, because I think one of the statistics I remember you telling me, and this goes back to, to kind of maybe the beginning of this journey, looking at, at the design newsletter is, yeah. I think you said you get something like one and a half million content downloads from the pattern each month. And those yeah. are really good at getting new opt-ins and new customers in yeah. the door. So yeah. that it does make sense to take all of the data that they're willing to give you and make that experience so much more kind of personalized as yeah. well. Secure that they stay longer and receiving our emails. And of course, this is you cannot just force everything to everyone to receive these emails. Yeah. So I'm also looking into quite a more um, uh, customized um, opt out yeah. uh, options to keep the customers in because they some customers receive a whole lot of emails from us because we send so much. So it's like when you're trying to opt out, I'm beginning to look into also have an option that you're only receiving our automations. Yeah. So not just, so you're not receiving who be main or there will be uh, the, the, um, the sale newsletter or the design newsletter, but you can actually choose only to receive the personalized information. Yeah. So it's also a thing if we look, it's not ready now, but if I look for the rest of 21, 
that would be also a thing that I, I'm working on to try to, to make more loyalty to our customers. Yeah, I think, and that ties in really nicely to kind of the next question, which is what does the next year look like yeah. for, for a hobby? I think probably COVID has been kind of really kind to your business as well, because we've all been stuck at home and looking for new things to do. And maybe this has been really good to, to bring new customers in the door. I know before the pandemic as well, you were, opening more physical retail stores, right? Which I think as a business is quite mm -hmm. unusual, especially nowadays when we're seeing so many, at least here in the UK, kind of retail stores shut down and people put more focus online, but you guys mm -hmm. are working really hard to have that full omni-channel customer experience and to kind of meet your customers wherever they want you to be. Um, mm -hmm. What are going to be kind of your main objectives over the next 12 months? Um, and how, what does kind of a year from now look like for a hobby customer? What do you want the experience to be like for them? Yeah. From my perspective, it's, it's more or less what I have uh, told about right now. Look more in the, the fast sale to the loyalty spectrum. So it's being more relevant to the customer. Um, but we have a whole lot on our board right now because we have we have a plan of uh, opening a store in Germany. Uh, it should have opened uh, next week, but maybe, maybe not. <laughs> and Germany is the is the market that we are looking heavily into. But we have also some really interesting stuff in our sleeves. There's uh, something about a community and other stuff that is not. Uh, Reveal yet, <laughs> but it's also stuff that I, that I'm going to to use quite heavily in Emasis. Uh, but everything is uh, is working around um, this loyalty, trying to to gain more out the customers, trying to lead to take the lead to gain be be customers, some from lead to first purchase, and everything like that. I'm going to chase that a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I, yeah, it's been really lovely kind of talking to you and understanding how this journey has kind of moved for hobby over the past year. Um, thank you so, so much for your time. I know we have one question, which yeah. we're keen to ask everyone, um, which is Black Friday yeah. 2021. What are your plans? What does that typically look like for hobby? And are you going to do kind of anything Big that you can tell us about yeah for me we are, we have black friday every day right <laughs> so so we are just going uh, going we actually start black friday days before black friday and that we have done for the last couple of years and it's been a huge success so my um if I could, could give an advice, then it's uh, not to start Black Friday on Black Friday. It started at days before, and uh, and uh, it's our it's it, it, we have a week Black Friday, and uh, it's the most selling. Uh, it's the best season of the year. Yeah. So, and I I I expect to double this year if we compare to twenty, because we also we have gone in we're going to get into Germany right now, so we've been more. Uh, the brand knowledge in Germany is gonna go up. And we also see the US market as a market that we really wanna push heavily into. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, double it and just uh, <laughs> one week Black Friday, not just the Friday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully this is also where all of these kind of little bits of personalization that you've been working on will work really, really well yeah. for your customers, right? Yes. And yeah, double it. Well, that's yeah. a big goal. Um, but I know you guys will smash it because you've been- When we talk Black Friday, this, uh, this um, quality over quantity, that doesn't count. <laughs> Let me say that. <laughs> right. yeah. More is less, more is less. <laughs> perfect thank you so much marianne yeah thank you